supposed to do it, Dad. They want us to do it. I don't way. know that way. Why would they change math? Uh, math is math. Okay, math Dad. is math. G'day, McGrathletes. Welcome back to the channel for another episode of Maths. All right, today we're doing a revision video for the extension one topic polynomials. Looking at a few HSC questions, starting off with some easy ones and working up to more challenging ones. Uh, as always, the way to get the best value out of these videos, if you've already studied some polynomials, is to pause the video when the question comes up, have a go yourself, and then work through my solution with me and see if we arrived at the same answer, maybe in a different way. Who knows? Okay, let's kick it off with a nice easy one for Ram, the 2013 exam, a nice little E1 level question. So as basic as you can get. I think this was the first question in the multiple choice. So starting off with the polynomial given here with an unknown value at the end called K. Uh, this polynomial has a factor x minus 2. What is the value of k? All right, so as long as you know your factor theorem, and if you don't have a video on it that you can go and watch, um, this is a very easy question because when uh, x minus a is a factor of the polynomial, it means when you sub in a into the polynomial, you get a remainder of 0. Okay, that's the remainder and factor theorem working together. So we know that when we take this polynomial and let x equal 2, the answer should be equal to 0, and we can solve for k. So subbing in, changing all our x's into 2's and then just simplifying. We get 8 here, um, we get 4 times 4 here, so we get 16 and 12 here. Still got a k on the end that we're going to figure out at the end. Uh, combining these together, 8 minus 16 minus 12 is equal to minus 20. So we have minus 20 plus k is equal to 0. Therefore, k must be equal to 20. If you got the same number, well done. You're off to an amazing start and I'm so proud of you. Okay, now moving on to a higher level, looking at a question from the 2012 exam. This is an E2 level question. We have a polynomial equation with roots alpha, beta, and gamma. And here are some more facts about alpha, beta, and gamma. Which of these four polynomials satisfy these three um, these three conditions? Okay, so this question is using the sum and product of roots, which are facts that are now located on your reference sheet. In 2012, they weren't. So now this question is even easier. You've got all the content. You don't have to memorize it. You just need to know how to apply it. So first bit of content is that the sum of the roots of any polynomial individually is always equal to minus b over a. So, so a is in front of the cubed, b is here, c is here, and d is here. All right, let's check um, Let's check the first one. The value of b is 2, and the value of a is 1. So minus b over a would be minus 2 over 1, which would be minus 2, which is what we want it to be from the question. So a and b are going to both work with this fact using this property. Because C and D have negative values of B, their answer for minus B over A is going to be a negative negative, which will be a positive, so it'll be positive 2. So it's not going to be C, and it's not going to be D. So we've already eliminated half of our options. Now for the second fact, the sum of our roots in pairs, this is always equal to um, C over A, but because in all four equations the value of C is 3, there's no way of differentiating between them because they all work. So we can't use that one. We'll go straight to the product of roots, which is alpha, beta, gamma. This is always equal to minus d over a. So let's check if option a works. Option a has d equal to 1 and a equal to 1. So minus d over a would be minus 1 over 1, which would be minus 1, not positive 1. So question a, or option a doesn't work, which means by process of elimination, it must be option b. So well done. If that was your selection, you get a gold star. Okay, up next from the 2012 exam as well, we have an E3 level question. So we've got a polynomial being divided by x plus 1, x minus 3. The remainder is 2x plus 7. What is the remainder when we just divide by x minus 3? All right, so this question relies on you being able to write your polynomial in um, di uh, divisor, quotient, and remainder form. This thing right here. Okay, this is a really, really important bit of content that's used in... Uh, quite frequently in exam questions. So it's important that you understand this, and I do have this in a video earlier in the channel. So this says a polynomial can be written as what you're dividing by, the result of your division, and then what the leftover is. So if we substitute the information in the question, we have a polynomial equal to our divisor is x plus 1, x minus 3. The quotient isn't mentioned, so we don't know what the quotient is, but the remainder is 2x plus 7. So it looks like this, okay? We don't know the quotient, but um, it's not going to matter. Now, we are trying to find the remainder when we divide by x minus 3. So, once again, the remainder theorem says when you divide by x minus a, the remainder will be equal to the value of a substituted into the polynomial. So, we know that p of 3 should be equal to, um, should, be, should give us our remainder, which is what we're trying to find. Okay? So, we take our polynomial that we just wrote in green, and now we're going to replace all the x's with 3's because we are applying the remainder theorem. 
3 plus 1 here, 3 minus 3 here, which is great because 3 minus 3 is 0. So this entire front term is all being multiplied by 0 and it's going to magically vanish away. On the end, we have 2 times 3 plus 7. So we end up with 0 here, 6 here, and 7 here. So we get our final answer equal to 13, which is option D. Okay? So very important you understand this line in red because it's very, very useful for a lot of different questions as we're going to see today in this video. Okay, moving on to another E3 from the 2012 exam. We have a polynomial equal to all this. Okay, so following on from the last question, we can read this as, oh, this is a polynomial being divided by these two things um, with a quotient and then a remainder with A and B. And finding A and B is part of the question. Okay, A and B are real numbers. When P of X is divided by X plus one, the remainder is minus 11. Cool. When we divide by X minus three, the remainder is one. Also cool. Okay, part A for one mark, what is the value of B? So to find the value of B, we're gonna use the first fact in the question, which is that when we divide by X plus one, the remainder is minus 11. Once again, applying the remainder theorem, this tells us that when we take the polynomial and we let X equal negative one, okay? Cause you have to look at this X plus one and think of it as an X minus minus one, all right? So when we sub minus one into the polynomial, the answer should be equal to minus 11. So that's a little equation we can form hopefully solve uh, for B. So using this fact, subbing into the polynomial, we get um, minus one plus one at the start, which again is great news because that bracket is gonna turn into zero. And so this whole thing turns into zero. So it doesn't even matter that we don't know what Q of X is because it's gonna vanish. And also in here, minus one plus one again is zero. So A is gonna vanish as well. And we're gonna have zero plus zero plus B equals minus 11. So straight away we get the value of B, which is why it was only one mark. B is equal to minus 11. Sweet, now for the next part, we can go back to the question and where we see this B, we can replace it with a minus 11. And now we can do part B. So part B, find the remainder when we divide by X plus one, X minus three. Well, the question is already set up. So the polynomial is written as if we have divided by X plus one, X minus three. Here's the quotient, here's the remainder. And that's what we are trying to find, which we're already halfway towards because we know what the bit on the end is. If we just figure out what A is, this whole thing on the end is gonna be your leftover, which is called the remainder. So the second fact from the question is that when we divide by X minus three, the remainder is one. Again, applying the remainder theorem, this tells us that X, when we sub in three, the answer to the polynomial should be equal to one. So we're using this fact, okay, the remainder theorem. So we take our polynomial, we sub in three, so we get three plus one, three minus three, Q of three, and then A times three plus one. Again, question's well designed because three minus three is zero. So again, the whole front term just turns into zero and we end up with A multiplied by four um, is equal to minus 11. Okay, awkward little edit point here because I made a mistake and I figured it out, but now I fixed it and I actually edited it for once because um, I was gonna be too embarrassed. Anyway, here we go. Um, all right, from here, the front part is all gonna turn into zero, as I mentioned. And now in here, we've got four plus A minus 11 equals one. So there's our next line, not the mistake that was there before because I'm dumb. Um, all right, we're gonna add the 11 across to get four A equal to 12. Divide by four and we get A equals three. Okay, cool. Now we know what A is. We have the whole bit up here as our remainder that we can figure out to get the final mark. So we can change the A to a three. Uh, we can expand this out to three X plus three, subtract the 11 and we get our remainder as three X minus eight. So that answer right there gets you two marks from the 2012 exam, as long as you don't make the mistake that I did. Okay, um, what's up next? We've got a question, another E3 level from an old relic from the 2008 HSC exam. We have a polynomial, and now they're using lowercase letters because why not? Uh, we've got a polynomial, A and C are unknown, B is 16, uh, D is minus 120. A and C are constants. The three zeros, or the three roots, whatever you want to call them, of the polynomial are minus two, three, and beta, or beta. Find the value of beta for three marks. All right, let's dive in. So. Given that we know that minus two and three are roots of the polynomial, this tells us that when we sub them into the polynomial, the answer should be zero, okay? That's what roots do, they, they, they give you a value of zero. So we know that when we sub minus two in, the answer should be zero, so let's just do it. We're gonna change all our x's to minus twos, as we can see here. At the front, we get minus eight times a. Here we get 16 times four, which is 64, and we've got minus two c minus 120. Now we're just gonna tidy up this equation because we're gonna get another one using the three and then we're gonna solve them together. 
So we're going to multi add the 120 across, subtract the 64 across, and we get minus 8a minus 2c equals 56. Because these are all even numbers, we can make this even tidier. We're going to divide everything by minus 2. So we're going to get 4a here, we're going to get 1c here, and we'll get minus 28 here. And now we're going to use that later on. Let's go across and do the same thing with the 3. So when we sub 3 into the polynomial, it's a root, so it gives you a value of 0. Sub it in, and it looks like this. And now we're going to have 27a at the front. We're going to have 16 times 9 here, which is 144, and plus the bits on the end. Yeah, nailed it. Okay, cool. Uh, add the 120 across again, subtract the 144, and we get minus 24 over on the right-hand side. Again, we can tidy this up because these are all factors of 3. So dividing everything by 3, we get 9a, 1c, and minus 8. Cool. Now, these are two equations we can solve simultaneously. So we can figure out a and c, and that'll make finding the third root um, super duper easy. Okay, so uh, here are our simultaneous equations. Because we have a c here and a c here, I'm going to subtract the first equation from the second. So 9a minus 4a is 5a. The c's give us a value of 0, and minus 8 take away negative 28 works out to be plus 28, which gets us uh, 20 on the right-hand side. Divide both sides by 5, and we get a is equal to 4. Now, that's actually um, that's all we need, I think. Yeah, because to answer this question now, we're going to use the fact that this root plus this root plus this root, aka the sum of the roots, is always equal to minus b over a. We already have b, and now we have a as well, so we can actually figure out the right-hand side and then solve for the unknown root. So minus 2 plus 3 plus the extra root is equal to uh, minus 16 over a, which is 4. So on the right-hand side, we're just going to get minus 4. Minus 2 plus 3 is b. Sorry, <laughs> minus 2 plus 3 is 1. So subtract 1 from both sides, and we get beta is equal to minus 5. So if you got that value there, there are a couple other ways you can do this question, but if you got minus 5 as your answer, there's your three marks. So well done. Okay, and finishing off with uh, what was an E3 level uh, question, but it was in the extension 2 exam from 2007. So I'm going to optimistically say this would be an E4, which is the highest possible band. We've got the zeros of this cubic polynomial, uh, alpha, beta, and gamma. Find a cubic polynomial with integer, whole number, coefficients, whose zeros are 2 alpha, 2 beta, and 2 gamma for 2 marks. Okay, I'll show you two ways of doing this question. I'll show you the proper way, and I'll show you the shortcut that I use that um, is just magic. So, first of all, we know that the sum of the roots, alpha plus beta plus gamma, once again, is equal to minus b over a. Um, so in this polynomial, minus b is going to be 5 and a is going to be 1. So alpha plus beta plus gamma, wait, no, I'm a dumb dumb. Uh, the b is in front of the x squared, which is invisible, so it's actually 0. That's c. I'm a dummy. a is 1, b is 0, c is minus 5, and d is 3. My apologies. Okay, so that means that if alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to 0, that means if we multiply both sides by 2, 2 alpha plus 2 beta plus 2 gamma is also equal to 0. That tells us in our new polynomial, the sum of these three roots is still going to be zero, which means the value of b is going to be zero as well. So we've got one of the coefficients. Um, in our original polynomial, the sum of the roots in pairs is always equal to c over a. So we're going to have minus five over one, which is minus five. And now if we change our alpha and beta to two alpha and two beta and change the gamma to two gamma, it looks like this. Okay, so this is the new roots on the left-hand side. Because 2 times 2 is 4, it's kind of like we've taken the left-hand side of this and we've multiplied everything by 4, okay? From this line to this line, um, everything on the left has been multiplied by 4. So we'll multiply the right-hand side by 4 and get minus 20, okay? This tells us that the sum of the roots in pairs for these three roots um, is equal to minus 20, which means that the value of C is going to be equal to 20 because A is going to be 1 for this example, just so it works out nice. And last bit of the puzzle, the sum of the roots, oh sorry, the product of the roots, alpha, beta, gamma, is always equal to minus d over a. For our original polynomial, that's going to be minus 3 over 1, which is minus 3. So now we're going to change alpha, beta, and gamma to 2 alpha, 2 beta, 2 gamma, which means the left-hand side has been multiplied by 2 times 2 times 2, so it's been multiplied by 8. So the right-hand side gets multiplied by 8, and we get minus 24. So the product of our three roots, 2 alpha, 2 beta, 2 gamma, is minus 24. That tells us the value of uh, d must be equal to 24. So there is our answer. We've got um, an a value of 1, a b value of 0, 
we've got a C value of minus 20 and a D value of 24. So there is our polynomial with these three roots. That's the long way, it's a bit of work. The shortcut is if you are doubling your roots, um, the way you find the new polynomial is you can just actually halve your input. So to find this answer, the shortcut method is to just do the polynomial with half of X subbed in, okay? Half of X is doubling the roots. Um, I'll talk more about this when I do some graphing videos later on, but for today, this is just a little shortcut to finish off the video. So taking our polynomial, replacing our X's with X over twos, we get X cubed over eight here. We get five X over two here and three here. Now this works, but the problem is the coefficients aren't integers. We want the numbers to be nice and whole numbers. So we're gonna take each part of our polynomial and we're gonna multiply it by eight, which is not gonna change the roots. It'll just change how, you know, how stretched the graph is basically. So times in this by eight, we get X cubed. Times in this by eight, we get 40 over two, which is gonna be equal to minus 20. And then times in the three by eight, we get 24, which is the same answer as we got before, but we use four lines of working instead of 12. So. Either way, if you got this answer right here, well done, because that's an extension two level question that we don't really touch on a lot in extension one these days, but there's your answer. All right, beautiful, that's it for today. I hope um, that helped you with your study in polynomials and made you a bit more confident with some assessment level questions. I'm gonna try and do one of these videos for every topic in extension one as I work through them over the next year or two. So subscribe and stay tuned for those if you care. All right, thank you so much for watching and um, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.